This episode is brought to you by Fond Recollections. Cherish the fond memories of your loved ones with their interactive living obituary. He worked so hard to ensure we had a great life, but now he's gone. We miss him so much. One day our granddaughter won't remember him or how wonderful he was. Fond Recollections offers us a chance to remember him when he was young and full of life. With Fond Recollections memorial plaques and website, we can upload all our photos and videos of him. Visit FondRecollection.com today and cherish the happy memories of your loved ones. Chapter 7. Trouble in the Waters Today was the day OG Mims would finally meet his end by the hands of Loco Blue for what he did to Jamal Blue. Loco was filled with anger and was driven by the desire for revenge. He was determined to take out OG Mims at whatever cost. As planned earlier, Loco and his gang decided to drive over to the Blood neighborhood right at the crack of dawn, looking for OG Mims. According to the information Loco had collected, OG Mims was supposed to be meeting up with the corrupt police officers at this time of day, and he knew that this was the right time to end OG's life since most of the Blood gang members of OG Mims were asleep. Upon driving up to the Blood neighborhood in his discreetly red-colored Cadillac, Loco recognized the unmarked police car standing at the street corner while OG Mims was standing at the right window talking to the cops. Wait up, little homie. We're gonna stop here for a second. Let them dirty-ass cops pass before we go in and clip that fool OG Mims, directed Loco. After the Crips had patiently waited for three minutes, the cops finally decided to pull away with their money, leaving OG Mims behind alone and defenseless against Loco and the gang of Crips eager to prove themselves to Loco. Loco ordered his men to speed up as they approached OG Mims, who was now crossing the street to get to his crib. The car that led the way housed Loco himself in the passenger seat and was now on the way to run over OG Mims. The car sped up and hit OG Mims, who was completely caught off guard since he thought the car belonged to one of his gang members due to its red color. OG Mims fell to the ground and screamed in pain and agony. Loco had a look of disgust and hatred on his face as he ordered his driver to reverse the red Cadillac and hit OG Mims again. The driver did as he was ordered, but this time, OG Mims lay motionless on the street. Stop! yelled Loco to his driver as he noticed that OG Mims was now downed. Loco got out of his car with his two pit bulls that were barking ferociously at OG Mims' motionless body and suddenly let go of the chains that held the pit bulls back from tearing up OG Mims' body. Get his ass, boys, commanded Loco. The dog sprinted towards OG Mims and began to tear his limbs apart by pulling them and biting at them. As the dogs vandalized OG Mims' body, Loco began to approach OG's body with his Glock in his hand. Upon reaching OG Mims' body, Loco was surprised that he was still alive and breathing. You're a stupid motherfucker. You thought I would let you get away with killing my son? Said Loco as he shot OG Mims in the stomach, which made OG Mims scream in pain. With his last breath, Mims whispered, Fuck you, punk ass nigga. I hate you. And that fucking family of yours. I will see you in hell. Before Mims could complete what he was about to say, Loco had already put a bullet straight through his head and was now standing above him, staring at his motionless body with contempt in his eyes. As Loco stood in the middle of the street, having shot the Bloods leader, he noticed that people from the neighborhood started to come out of their houses with looks of disbelief on their faces. This gave Loco an incentive to walk back towards his car as slowly as possible so that everyone knew who killed OG Mims at the end of the day. Loco approached his car, and just before he entered his car, he turned around and yelled to the increasingly large crowd. Tell that snitch ass nigga Ricky, I said thank you for the information. Then, Loco got into the car and they drove off. He smiled as he got out of blood territory because he knew that Ricky would be taken care of by his own, as he would be blamed for Mims' death. The Blood neighborhood was now in a state of shock and disbelief as they stood over the motionless body of OG Mims. Ricky's action of disloyalty was sure to buy him back for what he had done, and his fate was now at the hands of the Blood gang members who were riled up to teach him a lesson. Snitching was the worst thing you could do if you were a part of a gang, and Richie had committed the worst crime of them all by giving out information that got the gang leader killed. Later in the afternoon, Thomas was driving when he heard about OG Mims' death on the police radio he had installed in his car. He was instantly shocked and decided to rush towards the scene of the crime. He thought to himself as he drove towards blood territory that Ricky might be telling the truth after all. 
and now he wanted to become the first reporter to break the story of O.G. Mim's death. Upon arriving at the scene of the crime, Thomas recognized one of the officers present on site. It was Officer Kelly, who worked part-time at Thomas's family's funeral home business. So Thomas decided to approach him with all his questions. Excuse me, officer. What happened here? The usual shit. Niggas killing each other. However, this one looks like an assassination rather than a simple murder. His body looks like it was run over by a vehicle a couple times before being shot to death. The poor bastard was also bitten several times by what looks like dog bite marks, said Officer Kelly with his arms crossed across his chest. That sounds a little bit extreme, don't you think? Questioned Thomas. Yeah, he must have really pissed someone off, agreed Officer Kelly. Any suspects, clues, or leads uncovered during the investigation? Asked Thomas as he pulled out his notepad. Investigation? Please, we are not looking to solve this case. Trust me, this type of shit always works itself out in the end. We will just let them kill each other and collect the bodies. Besides, it's not like any whites got killed, noted Officer Kelly with an unbothered look on his face. The words that came out of Officer Kelly's mouth did not surprise Thomas, but they did disappoint him. Thomas knew that his little southern town's law and order were corrupt, and the demise of little boys like Jamal Blue was never going to be of any concern to the police. So, you are saying, on the record, that if the person killed here today was white, the case would be solved? inquired Thomas. Nothing I say to you was on the record. Do I make myself clear? Now get behind the yellow tape. No more questions, said Officer Kelly as he escorted Thomas behind the yellow tape. Well, thank you, officer. I'm sure I'll see you at the funeral, considering the fact you work for my family part-time, pointed out Thomas. Yeah, I'll see you there, smartass, replied Officer Kelly. Thomas made his way back into the car after taking a couple of pictures. And as he sat by himself, he realized how drastically things were about to change. The killing of O.G. Mims was the start to a bloody gang war, and Thomas had become convinced the cycle of violence was only just beginning. Later that evening, Ricky, who was at his house, watching television, found out about O.G. Mims' death on the local news channel. This information made Ricky happy and content, as he had now taken his revenge. Ricky decided to give Thomas a call to brag about the valuable information that he had provided him. What did I tell you, nigga? That old motherfucker had it coming, said Ricky in an excited pitch. Yeah. I guess you were right, but I'm afraid this is only a start for the worst things to come, answered Thomas. Who cares about that? Cannot stop niggas from killing each other. Now listen, I got more information for you. This time it's about guns and why they're in these young bloods' hands. Meet me at Mr. Chen's restaurant tomorrow afternoon. All right, I'll see you there, agreed Thomas. The day after killing OG Mims, Ricky was on his way towards Mr. Chen's restaurant. Ricky was walking along the back alley where he was supposed to meet Thomas when suddenly a red car pulled up beside him with blood gang members in it, pointing their guns at Ricky. Ricky noticed the car and attempted to make a run for it, but soon figured out it was too late. The vehicle driver ordered one of the gang members in the car to get out and grab Ricky before he could run away. Two blood members got out of the car and grabbed Ricky before he could get away. And one of them opened the trunk of the car and helped push Ricky into it. Ricky was left defenseless as he was mobbed by bloods who are now driving off towards the industrial section of town with Ricky in their car's trunk. Ricky tried to resist and scream for help as he looked around for a latch to open the trunk, but his actions were of no use. He could feel the car going over a railroad track at a high speed, which made him realize he was far away from Mr. Chen's restaurant. You a dead man, Ricky! You snitch ass nigga! said one of the members present in the car. Ricky finally realized that local blue had sold him out and was now regretting his decision to tell him anything in the first place. Ricky knew that the only way he can get out and escape this predicament was if he fought off whoever opened the trunk door and made a run for it as quick as he possibly could. The car stopped in the middle of an abandoned warehouse and there were torture devices set up in place for Ricky's arrival. The Bloods expected Ricky to put up a fight once they would open the trunk. So they shot two bullets in the trunk before opening it, injuring Ricky in the leg and knee. This made Ricky scream in agony but he knew he had no way out of the situation and had to put up a fight regardless. What the fuck you motherfuckers doing? Aren't we all bloods? You motherfuckers kidnap me and shoot me? What, what did I do? Yelled Ricky as he got pulled out of the trunk of the car by blood gang members. You know what you did, blood. You got OG Mims killed. Everyone knows it was you that told that nigga Loco Blue that OG Mims killed his son. Ain't no point in getting scared now, you snitch. Own what you did. You're dying anyway said the gang member who commanded other gang members to pull Ricky out of the trunk. I would never do that shit. I put that on my mama. You gonna believe a punk-ass crip over a blood? 
Hell, I jumped in half of you niggas in the game. Don't believe this bullshit, pledged Ricky, who was now sweating heavily. Nigga, shut the fuck up. You cannot talk your way out of this shit. You are dying today, and slowly at that, nigga. Hang his ass up over there off the steel beam with them chains. It's time to cut this nigga up, instructed the apparent leader. The blood members did as they were ordered and hung Ricky by his arms, after which they duct taped his feet together so he could not move. This was the end, and Ricky knew there was nothing he could do anymore to dissuade the bloods. We're not gonna waste our time talking to this punk ass bitch. Take his pants down, said the blood lead member as he looked at Ricky with anger in his eyes. What the fuck? Do not do this. I got a kid. I got a son. Please do not do this. You are making a mistake, cried Ricky as he tried to beg for his life. Without any hesitation, one of the gang members pulls down Ricky's pants and takes out a long and sharp knife off the table and cuts off Ricky's penis. This makes Ricky scream with pain as he starts to bleed heavily. Ricky's begging intensifies as he finally asks them to kill him rather than torturing him in this fashion. However, instead of listening to Ricky, the gang member repeatedly stabs him in the chest. Such a horrific showcase of violence made some of the younger gang members sick by seeing all the blood that was being spilled. The leader of the kidnapping notices this and yells, What the fuck you niggas scared of? That motherfucker got OG Mim smoked. He's got to suffer. Now this is what's going to happen. Everybody better pull out their guns and shoot this punk ass bitch. And I mean everybody shoots him. This way, all of us is going to have some blood on our hands. So if any of you smart motherfuckers think about snitching, you're going to jail along with me. Suddenly, all the gang members started to shoot at Ricky one at a time. Ricky was dead by the third shot, but everyone had to shoot him in fear of retaliation. Once Ricky was bombarded by bullets, his body was taken down and wrapped up in a large plastic body bag. The Bloods decided to drive up to Mr. Chen's restaurant and drop Ricky's body out of a moving car. As soon as they dropped Ricky's body and drove off with screeching tires, Lisa, who was currently working at the restaurant with her father, noticed what happened and decided to approach the bag once the coast was clear without knowing what she was about to discover. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you had fun or picked up anything from this episode, please assist us by hitting the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. You can also comment and share our content. These small things really help our channel and mean a lot to us. Also, special thanks to our Patreon supporters. You guys are the heartbeat of this channel, and we can't thank you enough for being so generous. If you would like to join our Patreon community, please click on the link below. You can contribute as little as $5 per month. You can get all kinds of perks. You can even buy merchandise of your favorite characters at our shop store. Click on the link provided below. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, remember you are cherished by us. So be kind and know that we consider you as family.